Okay, well, it's towards the end of June. We have blue in the sky. Haven't seen that for a while. So, we're getting ready to shoot tonight. And I have a cool new toy. Let's go look. Okay, the SV Boney dual narrow band filter comes in this lovely colorful box and a nice plastic case so the story of this is I was searching Aliexpress a couple of months ago and they had a sale going and I was looking at this filter and there were three different coupons for it and it let me apply them all so I got this filter for $125 and free shipping so I couldn't not do it so I've had this filter for a little over two months now but with the time of year it was and the weather that we've had since January I haven't had a chance to even see a nebula but the next couple of nights are supposed to be clear so we're gonna try this out so the plan is to pit it up against my other filter, which is the SV Boney CLS filter. It's a clip-in filter, it goes on my DSLR just like that. Uh, it's been serving me well, but we just recently got a new traffic light on the corner near my house and they've redone all of the street lighting and moved everything to LED. So this used to be good when I had lots of sodium lights, but now I don't think it's doing that much for me. So we'll be using this clip-in filter, and then I have the T-ring with the threaded end that this will thread onto, and we'll try that. What we're going to be doing is I will shoot an hour's worth of data on each filter. I'll try to shoot at the same time on two nights with the filters so I can kind of get the same thing going. And we'll see the differences in the two filters, whether it's worth it or not. I'm hoping this will help me with the light pollution around my house because it's such a narrow band. So, speaking of, so this is the band pass on the dual band. It's a seven nanometer filter. Um, it passes 500 nanometers, which is your oxygen three signal and a little over 650 nanometers, which is your HA, hydrogen alpha. And that's about all that it lets through so hopefully it will take out some broadband stuff uh, I know I can only use this for emission nebulas because you want to get the broadband stuff from reflection nebulas and galaxies of course so this is the CLS filter which you can see is a lot broader band um, supposedly this is where the mercury vapor and sodium lights live uh, like i said I just don't have to worry about that anymore so it's letting a lot of other broadband stuff through this also came with the with the filter the black and white printout i thought wow maybe they test each filter but no it looks exactly like this one so I'm pretty sure it's just a printout and I can't read Chinese anyway, so I don't know what it says. So, that's the test. Let's do it. Okay, tonight we're going to shoot the Cygnus Wall. It's an NGC 7000, the North American Nebula. Shot that before. This actually was one of the first YouTube videos I did. Although I shot it with a wide angle 200 millimeter camera lens, not my telescope. So we'll shoot it tonight with the telescope and 
I don't know I can get of the North American Nebula is the Cygnus Wall. Hopefully we can get a pretty picture. The Cygnus Wall is a large, dark cloud of gas and dust that's located in the constellation Cygnus. It's part of the North American Nebula, which is a large emission nebula that is about 1,500 light years away from Earth. The Cygnus Wall is named for its resemblance to a wall, which is created by the bright emission nebula that lie behind it. The wall itself is actually a dark cloud of gas and dust that's blocking the light from the stars behind it. This makes the wall appear dark, even though it is actually made up of gas and dust. Cygnus Wall is a beautiful and interesting nebula that's well worth viewing. If you have the chance, I encourage you to check it out. Okay, here we are after a couple of nights of testing. Uh, first thing I will show you, I shot five minute exposure, so here's a couple of the shots, one from each filter. So here is a five minute exposure of CLS filter. Not a lot to see, but you can kind of see the wall here and here's the dual narrowband filter now this does look a lot noisier to me but you can definitely see a lot more definition in the nebula more contrast I guess so here's a comparison of the two. So on the left we have the Duo and on the right is the CLS filter. The Duo does look noisier but more information. And here is one hour of data stacked. I did an auto stretch and removed the green noise. That's all I've done to this. Definitely still noisy. Here is the duo. A lot more noise but here I'll show you a comparison of the two so on the left we have the duo on the right is the CLS filter on first glance the CLS looks a lot cleaner if you look close there's a lot more color information, a lot more contrast, uh, more definition in the nebula. The stars look a little smaller. So I just went ahead and shot several hours with the duo, I think eight and a half, and this is my result.fit so I just want to show you one cool thing if you just do an, I just did an auto stretch and remove the green noise It doesn't look like I have to do any kind of background extraction or anything right now. I mean, this picture looks almost good enough to go right now. So I'm sure with this filter, 
I don't think I'm going to have to do quite so much pre-processing to get a better looking image than I've gotten before. It takes care of all the light pollution I'm getting. I have no gradient. Uh, all I see now is all the dust and nebulosity from the nebula. I think I'm gonna like this filter. I could recommend it to those of you who don't have a lot of cash to lay out on filters. Then I got this one for 125 bucks. You can probably find it for around the same price if you keep your eye open. So I'll take a little while and process this image and throw it in at the end of the video. If this has helped you in any way, leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, buy a hat or a t-shirt, then I can buy more cool stuff to try out. And as always, I'll talk to you later and clouds suck.